Hi, my name is Danny Garrett, and I'm a biologist with the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. And today I'm going to show you a little bit more about how to catch yellow perch. Now for you guys that get out here fishing a lot, you already know how much fun and how easy these perch are to catch. But if you haven't experienced yellow perch fishing, you may not know just how much of a worthwhile endeavor it really can be. We're out here today on Lake Washington, which at 22,000 acres is the largest lake in western Washington. You might notice the familiar I-90 bridge in the background. A lot of people are intimidated by large lakes, particularly those of you that have small craft, maybe even inflatable rafts or canoes. But as you'll see today, not 60 yards from the Newport Marina boat launch, we're going to get into some nice sized yellow perch and show you just how much fun catching yellow perch can be. So let's hop in the boat. Okay, so before we uh, motor away from the dock here, let's talk a little bit about perch tackle. The good news is it's relatively simple and inexpensive. All you really need is a hook, a weight, and something to entice a strike. Now this rig is called a drop shot rig. It was brought over from, from Japan and uh, it's really been successful for fishing for smallmouth bass, particularly in western Washington. It's also useful for fishing for yellow perch. And that's because this rig is set up with the hook uh, suspended above a small weight, six to eight inches usually, and that allows your bait to be up off the bottom, out of the milfoil, and in the strike zone. On the end of that hook, you can use artificial or uh, live night crawlers. I prefer artificial, it's just easier, cleaner, and these fish are so aggressive, you usually don't need live bait. This finesse worm is uh, a snub made by sniper lures, and uh, white has always been a good color, also natural colors like brown and, and green, darker colors that uh, imitate uh, natural forage. So anyway, that's all there is to it. You're gonna wanna go with a four to six pound test. That's gonna allow you to sink down to the bottom fairly quickly, even in 20 feet of water with light weight. It's also going to allow you to feel your bait a lot better and impart uh, more action to the bait than you would with heavier line. So we're going to head out to the uh, edge of the weed line and see what this rig can do. Okay, so it's late August. We're out here on Lake Washington. Uh, where am I going to look for yellow perch? For one, there's a thermocline on the lake right now, right around 24 feet deep where there's a layer of warm water on top of cool water. A lot of larger smallmouth bass and particularly cutthroat trout that prefer cooler water are going to hang out below that layer. The perch, uh, particularly uh, the smaller ones, like the refuge of the, of the weeds, the milfoil. So they're going to be in a little shallow right along the edge of the weed line in 15 to 20 feet of water. Uh, larger perch may be out uh, venturing into deeper waters because they don't have uh, as much a risk of being preyed upon. Uh, so you can find some larger perch off a little deeper, but the majority of your perch are going to be right along the edge of the weeds in 15 to 20 feet of water. And this will vary from lake to lake depending on uh, what depth that weed line is. And, uh, and how deep the thermocline is. So those are things to watch for. We're going to look uh, for perch today along the edge of the weed line and throw a drop shot rig out here and uh, see how we can do. There he is. There's a nicer one. When you're grabbing these yellow perch, you want to be careful. You can see he's got his dorsal spines extended. He also has some spines off his, his uh, opercular, opercular flap and uh, spines on the cheek as well. So when you're grabbing these, you want to be very careful. I like to fold the dorsal spines down and grab them just like that. That way the dorsal spines aren't going to get me and I can safely handle them. Put him on the measuring board and see how big he is. Oh yeah, this is a nice sized fish. He's just over seven inches long. It's a nice size to keep for dinner. Ideally, we'd be catching, you know, eight to ten inches. And uh, but they they live in the same types of areas, so you're going to catch some sevens, you're going to catch some tens, and some smaller ones as well. But uh, this is a good size to fillet. Now, when you're looking for the edge of the weed line, obviously it helps to have electronics, and it's going to be very obvious to spot the milfoil uh, with, a, with a good piece of electronics. But that doesn't mean you can't just look down in the water and see the, the milfoil growing. The water's pretty clear in western Washington lakes, so you can just look down, and where that, uh, the weeds start to taper off is where you're going to target. If you don't have a depth finder and you're curious about the depth, the great technique that I used to use is a simple line and a weight. You can lower it down to the bottom and then measure the line you've, you've let out to get an idea of how deep you're fishing. Once you find the right depth, I'd stick with it because there are probably going to be a lot of perch in one little area and uh, you'll get dialed in and catch quite a few. Now, the bite of a yellow perch is going to be pretty light. It's similar to a smallmouth bass when they suck the bait in, but they got smaller mouths so they don't, they don't thunk the bait quite as much. It's going to be pretty subtle. 
but you'll feel a light tap. You don't need to set the hook. You just need to have a, a swift sweep of the rod in an upward direction, and they generally get hooked right in the roof of the mouth. There's one. It's about time. Oh, it's a pumpkin seed. This is another of our warm water species that we have in the lake. And they do get quite a bit bigger than this guy. But they're a really pretty fish. This guy is obviously too small to eat, but a larger pumpkin seed, uh, they're pretty tasty. But they need to get a little bigger, obviously, so we'll let this guy go. Pretty fish, though. There he is. Right by our marker buoy. <laughs> That's a nice perch. Wow. This is the kind of perch that Lake Washington can grow. Like I mentioned, needle nose pliers are really useful, especially on bigger fish that swallow the hook. That guy was in pretty deep. Let's put this guy on the measuring board and see how long he is. Now we're talking. This fish is just shy of 10 inches. When you get into a 10 inch size perch, that's the kind that you like to see on the end of your line. They fight, you're gonna get a really nice fillet off this fish. They're so strong, they're hard to hold on to. And again, watch out for those dorsal spines when you're, when you're grabbing them. You wanna lay them down along the back and hold them just like that. That'll keep them out of your hands. There's a good one. That's a nice size perch. Wow. That's a boat wake here. Gotta be careful of that. This is a dandy. Let's put him on the measuring board. Here, I'll hold him out for you so you can get a good look at him. <laughs> if I can hold him, I'll hold on to him. So a lot of you might be wondering why we as a department are interested in making a promotional perch fishing video. Well, we as fishery managers spend a lot of time uh, doing biological surveys on lakes and making management recommendations. Most of our surveys done on lakes in western Washington indicate that our populations of yellow perch are very robust and um, healthier and larger than any other fish species uh, populations that there are on the lakes. So our management recommendations would include something to the effect of we need to harvest more yellow perch in order to free up resources for other species. But uh, most cases, these management needs do not get communicated to you, the angler. So this video is a way in which we can communicate our management needs to you and hopefully increase the harvest on yellow perch and uh, improve our aquatic resources in general. Okay, so it's the end of the day. We sure have had a good time uh, making this video of the course of several days and teaching you how to a little bit more about perch fishing. I sure hope more of you come out here and take advantage of these resources. You know, uh, the yellow perch is certainly a, a bountiful creature in the lakes. You can see we ended up with 18 perch. We got a nice stringer to take home and eat. And uh, you know, these are, this is an underutilized resource. There's a lot of people that uh, don't even know they're out here. So come and take part and enjoy and remember there's no harvest restrictions so you can have as much fun as you want out here and uh, the perch don't care if you're in a wakeboarding boat or a jet ski or any other uh, floating craft as long as you got a pole and a fishing license you can come out here and have fun too thanks for watching okay so you've come back from the water you got a whole cooler of perch now the work begins i'm going to show you a couple of tricks to the trade on how to fillet these perch quickly and easily couple things you're going, to want to, you're going to want before you get started is a good cutting board, a good fillet knife, and a knife sharpener. I like a tool sharpener from Ace Hardware that puts a really rough edge on that fillet knife. It's going to give you a lot of cutting ability, but it's also going to dull fairly quickly. So you're going to have to uh, sharpen that fillet knife up several times during the course of filleting you know, 10 or 20 perch. So let me show you a couple different methods for filleting yellow perch. Okay, so there's two methods for filleting a yellow perch. One includes cutting through the ribs, and one includes cutting around the ribs. We're gonna start off on this larger fish here, cutting around the ribs. The first step is to slide your fillet knife in underneath the skin, up near the head, with your 
cutting edge pointed away from the fish. That's going to allow you to cut the skin from the inside right along the back. Then you want to take your flay knife and do the same thing pointed towards the anal fin, drawing a line just like this. That's where most of your meat's going to be. This is the gut cavity. We're going to avoid this area here. Then take your fillet knife now with the cutting edge pointed towards the fish and go right in where your initial cut was and go right along the backbone until you feel the blade stop and then turn upwards and cut out. What you're basically doing is you're peeling the fillet out from the uh, spine and the ribs And then you can flip the fish around and just take your knife and saw right down towards the tail. Now I like to leave a little piece at the end. That way I can flip that fillet over and use that as an anchor point to hold the fillet while I peel the skin off. Taking the skin off is very simple. You're just going to want to put the blade right along the skin, put some pressure on it, but keep the, the blade pretty much parallel to the, the cutting board and then just go right along and that fillet is just going to jump right out of the skin. That's a nice boneless fillet that's going to fry up really well. Okay, so in that last, last method we cut along the ribs so that we ended up with a boneless fillet at the end. We're going to get there the same way this time except we're going to saw right through the ribs this time and it's going to make things a little quicker and a little easier for smaller fish. So this time we're actually going to cut right through the scales. This is going to dull, dull up your knife a little bit but this is a quicker and easier way. Just cut straight down to the backbone and then you're going to turn your knife blade 90 degrees and cut straight along the backbone, sawing right through the ribs all the way down to the tail. Remember, leave a tag and flop it over. And then you can come back in with your fillet knife, peel that fillet off the skin. And the only thing you have to do on this, on this technique is to come back and trim those rib bones off your fillet which isn't that hard to do. It's just a matter of preference and which way you like to get it done. This is just as good as the other method. So you have a nice boneless fillet. You want to wash this in fresh water and get a, any excess blood. And I like to soak them overnight in water or even salt water to help leach out any excess blood. Okay, so let's show you that one more time. Again, we're going to want to cut down behind the opercular flap. Follow the backbone down to the tail, trim our fillet off, do the same thing on the other side. Trim the excess, sometimes you pick up a little piece of dorsal fin. Trim the rib meat. and add them to your pile. I also want to mention to you that we have some health advisories on some of our lakes. You'll notice in page 30 of our regulations pamphlet, we uh, do not recommend that you eat more than one meal of yellow perch, that's eight ounces of flesh, a week. And this is a recommendation from the Washington Department of Health. For most of us, this isn't, isn't an issue because we don't go perch fishing more than once a week. But for those of you that are really into it and like to consume yellow perch, make sure to pay attention to your health advisories and don't overconsume. Thanks a lot for joining us and be safe out there on the water.